With her acting versatility and offbeat good looks, she became one of the screen's greatest actresses and one of America's most beloved stars. I got you into this thing, I'll get you out of it. Will you marry me, Tracy? Don't fight me, Eleanor. What would you have me do? Give out, give up, give in? She is the one and only Katherine Hepburn. Katherine Hepburn was born in Hartford, Connecticut on May 12, 1907. While in college, she was bitten by the acting bug and decided to pursue a career in the performing arts. In 1929, she made her first appearance on Broadway and worked on the New York stage for two years. She arrived in California on July 4, 1932, ready to begin work at RKO Pictures. Her first film was Bill of Divorcement, appearing with screen legend John Barrymore. Under the direction of George Cukor, with whom she would work again, Hepburn's performance brought raves from critics and the public alike, making her an instant star. Darling, it would be dangerous for me to marry. Father! They're in there, your mother and that man. She told them she loves him. I heard her. You mustn't. I'm done with her. Get them out, I tell you. Get them out. You mustn't let your go like this. At once. Or I'll kill. Work came fast, and Hepburn appeared in a string of popular films, including Stage Door, which also starred Ginger Rogers and Lucille Ball. I intended to borrow it or anything. I just wanted to see how I'd feel in one of these things. Do you feel very different? I'll say. Well, why don't you wear it? Do you mean it? Oh, why not? You may as well go to petition in Ermin. You're sure to come back in rags. Well, what right you come breaking into my private office? Why won't I barricade yourself behind closed doors and refuse to see people? That happens to be none of you your business. You know the girl just fainted in your outer office because you broke an appointment with her? I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Well, as long as you keep that door closed, you'll never know anything. You're a producer. You ought to see people. I want to give you this. A girl gave it to me last year on my opening night, and it brought me luck. Darling, you're sweet. I wish you were going there to hold my hand. I'll be there. Hepburn's role as a modern struggling actress helped change her screen persona, making her even more popular. In 1938, Hepburn teamed with Cary Grant for Howard Hawk's delightful screwball comedy, Bringing Up Baby. <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to tell you that you've told... Oh, no, I didn't. Why, if you hadn't been in such a hurry that waited for my explanation, my coat. your coat would still be perfectly all right. <laughs> While chasing befuddled zoologist Grant with a leashed leopard in tow, Kate proved she was a deft comedian as well as a great dramatic actress. Hello, Dolgothy. Oh, Miss Susan, how did you get here? Influence. Don't worry, Gogsy, I'll get you out. Oh, sure, sure. Look, she got me out. That he was on the point of having a nervous breakdown. Yes. Does he want to wear those clothes? No, I don't want to wear this thing. I just want to get married. Oh, oh, so oh, nice of it. You don't know it. Quiet. Quiet. Listen to me. Quiet. Quiet. Don't talk so After a dry spell in the movies, Hepburn returned to the Broadway stage to appear in the hit play, The Philadelphia Story. Reprising her role of Tracy Lord for MGM's 1940 film version, Hepburn made a smash comeback and never again lost her footing as one of the screen's most powerful players. Oh, you're slipping red. I used to be afraid of that look. The withering glance of the goddess. I didn't think that alcohol would do... Oh, shut up. Dinah, stay here. Oh, please, Mother. Maybe he's going to sock her again. It's what everybody feels about you. It's what I first worshipped you for from afar. George, listen up. First, now, and always. Only from a little nearer now. Hey, darling? I don't want to be worshipped. I, I want to be loved. Someday over the rainbow, way up high. What is this, Connor? Oh, easy, easy, old man. She's not hurt. No, no. Not wounded, saw, but dead. Seems the minute she hit the water, the wine hit her. Now, look here, Connor. A likely story, Connor. Hello, Dexter. Hello, George. Hello, Mike. <laughs> you have a good mind, a pretty face, a disciplined body that does what you tell it. You have everything that it takes to make a lovely woman except the one essential an understanding heart. And without that, you might just as well be made of bronze. And the night that you got drunk on champagne and climbed out on the roof and stood there naked with your arms out to the moon, wailing like a banshee. I told you I never had the slightest recollection of doing any such thing. 
What in the name of all the trouble am I to do? Tracy. Yes, Mike. Oh, Parson Parson, he's never seen Kidridge before, has he? Now look, I got you into this thing, and I'll get you out of it. Will you marry me, Tracy? The film also starred Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart and garnered critical raves and multiple Oscar nominations. 1942 saw Hepburn appearing with the legendary Spencer Tracy for the first time. Woman of the Year was a comedy about a sports writer falling in love with a popular political reporter. Once he took her to a baseball game, but just once. Now to get lined up first in uh, the Senators, Washington will bat first. See, and after after they've made three outs, then the Yanks will come back. I see. And then they've got to make the same number of outs. That's right. That's right. She may have been the woman of the year, but she didn't win it with her cooking. <laughs> she and Tracy soon found they were soulmates, and they fell in love. Although Spencer Tracy was married, he and Hepburn carried on a passionate love affair until the day he died. What would you think about having a child? Tess! Tess, is that what all this build-up has been for? Did you think I'd have to be sold on the idea? Well, I wasn't quite sure. I thought perhaps I'd better get you into the right frame of mind. Get me into the right... me? Well, the sooner the better. It's already been done. Hepburn and Tracy would re-team for eight more films. 1942 saw them in their second feature, Keeper of the Flame. Like Caesar. You bought up the farm for him, didn't you? Your husband threw him off the place, didn't he? And when he left you in Midford here alone, that was the disaster, wasn't it? Chessie knows nothing about it. You did it alone. I don't even care why you wanted to get rid of Forrest. I only care that you won't let me help you. I'm in love with you. Don't you understand that? You can't do this to me. When a friend told Tracy that Hepburn's name should appear before his in the credits because it should be ladies first, Tracy replied, it's a movie, not a lifeboat. Hello, Arlene. In 1943, Hepburn did her part for the war effort by appearing in the film Stage Door Canteen. Yes, I know. Appearing at the end of the film, Hepburn had the honor of delivering the film's climactic patriotic speech. Wait a minute. Why'd you volunteer for this work? Because I wanted to help. Help what? I wanted to help my country. Why do you think your country needs your help? We're in a war and, and we've got to win. Yes, that's right. We're in a war and we've got to win. And we're going to win. And that's why the boy you love is going overseas. And isn't that maybe why you're going to go back in there and get on your job? Look, you're a good kid. I don't wonder he loves you. He knows what he's fighting for. He's fighting for the kind of world in which you and he can live together in happiness, in peace, in love. Don't ever think about quitting. Don't ever stop for a minute working, fighting, praying until we've got that kind of a world. For you, for him, for your children, for the whole human race. Days without end. Amen. Hepburn furthered her career in the 40s, appearing in numerous roles that often displayed her versatility. In 1944, she played an Oriental in Dragon Sea, based on the novel by Pearl Buck. Hepburn appeared with an impressive cast, including Turhan Bey, who was delighted to have a chance to work with Catherine. do it now. Take your grandchild with you. Who can think about money when somebody calls you and says you're going to play Katherine Hepburn's husband in a major million-dollar picture? That same year, she appeared with Spencer Tracy in Without Love, a fun romance about two people who get married for convenience, having both sworn off the idea of true love. You never want love in your life again. I never want it in mine. But our reasons are as different as the sun is from the moon. You don't want it because you've had all the worst of it. I don't want it because I've had all the best. And then there's all that, you know, what you call that powerful commodity to be put to you. So I thought... So you thought... So I wondered if maybe you'd like to marry me. Mrs. Rowan, you're nuts. What's all that? Well, that's a surprise for Jamie. Oh, well, the surprise is on you. I just left Jamie in the arms of Paul Carell. I nearly did, Pat. Nearly did what? Paul. 
for Paul? Ridiculous. I know, but it's true. Ah, oh, nonsense. You're not the falling type. You're, you're like the Tower of Pisa. You may have certain leanings, but you always remain upright. It seemed as though the public could not get enough of Hepburn and Tracy. What are you doing, Jim? If Chamberlain wants to declare war, he's going to get it. You're really going to go out in cold blood, shoot the first homesteader that comes over. That's right. In cold blood. If that's what you want to call it. Don't do it, Jim. Give up on it. Who are you protecting? Their string of films established them as one of the screen's greatest duos. In 1950, the two appeared in the comedy drama Adam's Rib, considered by many to be their best screen teaming. Adam! What? Don't you dare slam that door! All right. Hello, all you pleasant people. This is a Smith named Pete yapping at you about a Tracy named Spencer and a Hepburn named Catherine and a studio named Metro Goldwyn Mayer. This studio, my friends, has made a whimsical filmsical. Hmm, what fancy talk. Anyway, it's a swell show named Adam's Rib. Named Adam's Rib. Named Adam's Rib. Don't you want your rub down? You want a drink? Want anything? This tale of two married lawyers on opposing sides of a controversial court case became a metaphor for the battle of the sexes. And guess who wins? This is basic. I'm old-fashioned. I like two sexes. And what is more, I suddenly don't like being married to what is known as a new woman. I want a wife, not a competitor. Competitor, competitor! If you want to be a big he woman, go and be one, but not with me. When not co-starring with Spencer Tracy, Katherine Hepburn kept busy appearing with other top actors. Undercurrent starred her opposite Robert Taylor and Robert Mitchum. Song of Love matched her with Paul Henry and Robert Walker. One of Hepburn's most memorable films teamed her with the legendary Humphrey Bogart in 1951. Directed by John Huston in glorious Technicolor and shot on location, The African Queen told the story of a religious spinster and an alcoholic riverboat captain who team up to sabotage a German warship. As they brave the perils of Africa's most dangerous river on a tiny steamer, the two eventually fall in love. The film has become one of the all-time classics, but Hepburn was at first frustrated by the off-screen joking and drinking of Bogey and Houston. Eventually, she saw through their boyish antics, and the three became fast friends by the end of the shoot. Straight-laced Rosie Sayers, who learns about life, all about it. Well, I ain't sorry no more, you crazy, sound-singing, skinny old maid. Two people thrown together against their will. Get out! In a stirring and pulse-pounding a story as is known in fact or fiction. Waiting for the supper, man. I'm the captain, that's who. I ain't taking you along. You'd only be in my way. I suppose I was in your way going down the rapids. Then what you said to me back there on the river was a lie about how you never could have done it alone and how, how you'd lost your heart and everything. You liar. Hepburn rounded out the 50s with major roles in Summertime, The Rainmaker, and Suddenly Last Summer. In 1962, Hepburn gave a powerful performance as a morphine addict in A Long Day's Journey Into Night, based on the play by Eugene O'Neill. No picture in years has received this kind of critical acclaim. A monument to inspired movie making, praises the New York Mirror. Four stars, highest rating, a fine film with a brilliant cast, shouts the New York Daily News. Hepburn is nothing short of superb, adds the journal American. Someday, when the Blessed Virgin and gives me back 
the faith in her love and pity I used to have in my convent days. And I can pray to her again. This story of a deteriorating family teamed the actress with fellow talents Ralph Richardson, Jason Robards Jr., and Dean Stockwell under the knowledgeable direction of Sidney Lumet. Hepburn took a leave of absence from the screen from 1962 until 1967. Many thought she had retired, but in reality, she was caring for the increasingly ailing and dependent Spencer Tracy. In 1967, both Kate and Spence returned with a vengeance, appearing in their final film together, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, directed by Stanley Kramer and co-starring Sidney Poitier. The amusing drama tackled such controversial topics as racist attitudes and mixed marriages. Hepburn received her second of ultimately four Best Actress Oscars. Do you mean have we been to bed together? I don't mind you asking me that. We haven't. He wouldn't. Until today, I would never have believed that I could say such a thing. But when she fights you, I'm going to be on her side. Unfortunately, Spencer Tracy died two weeks after the film was completed. This was a rough blow for Hepburn, who lost not only a lover, but a confidant, a peer, and a friend. By the next year, Hepburn was working again, choosing strong dramatic roles and always giving her best. The occasion provided an opportunity for Henry to name his successor, to settle a dispute with the King of France, and to spend some time with his family. Her portrayal of Eleanor of Aquitaine opposite Peter O'Toole in The Lion in Winter won her the Best Actress Oscar for the second year in a row. Don't fight me, Eleanor. What would you have me do? Give out, give up, give in? Give me a little peace. A little? Why so modest? How about eternal peace? Now there's a thought. Well, what do we have? The holly or each other? And these ten years you've lived with everything I've lost and loved another woman through it all. I can peel you like a pear, and God himself would call it justice. I love your father's body. He was beautiful. It never happened. I can see his body now. Shall I describe it? Eleanor. His arms were buried with scars. No! I can feel his arms. I feel them. <laughs> What's the official line on sodomy? How stands the crown on boys who with boys. You unnatural animal. Unnatural, mummy. Don't tell me what's nature's way. If poison mushrooms grow and babies come with crooked backs, if goiters thrive and dogs go mad and wives tear their husbands, what's unnatural? You go to Rome, will rise against you. Who will? Richard, Jeffrey, John, and Eleanor of Aquitaine. The day those stout hearts band together is the day that peace they bleed. There'll be pork in the treetops come morning. A Delicate Balance in 1973 starred Hepburn and Paul Schofield and was based on the play by Edward Albee, author of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? The Broadway smash hit is now a movie about the way men and women really feel about each other when the pretending stops. A Delicate Balance. I do wish sometimes that I had been born a man. Not so hard. Their concerns are so simple. Money and death. Making ends meet until they meet. The end. <laughs> if they knew what it was like to be a wife, a mother, a lover, a homemaker, a nurse, a hostess, a agitator, a pacifier, a truth teller, a deceiver. I think it was a year when you spilled yourself on my belly, sir. Please, please, Tobias. But no, you wouldn't even say it out. I don't want another child, another loss. Please, please, Tobias. I'm guiding you, trying to hold you in. Like this, please. Don't leave me then like that. Not again. Tobias, please. I can take care of it. We won't have another child, but please, don't leave me like that. In 1975, Hepburn teamed for the first time with one of the classic movie icons, John Wayne. They were never meant for each other. But here they are. I will make sure of what my father's murderers reap. You will make sure of nothing. He's True Grit's boozing, woman baiting Rooster Cogburn. She's the lady, all blue blood and steel. I do not fear a skunk. 
I simply do not care for his odor. In Rooster Cogburn, Wayne returned to the role he had previously played in True Grit, while Hepburn's role was reminiscent of the one she played in The African Queen. I like to be called high smelling and low down. Meet your maker! Eyeball to eyeball or shoulder to shoulder. They're the toughest pair in the West. You got the gun, but you ain't got the know-how to use it. Ain't that the way it works, Hawk? We're loaning the raft off you. That ain't loaning, that's stealing, and he can't have it. Am I gonna have trouble with you? Not a teeny weeny bit of trouble as long as you got that. Being around you pleases me. You will be careful, won't you, Ruben? I care about you very much. Katherine Hepburn received her fourth Best Actress Oscar for her role in On Golden Pond in 1981. She teamed with veteran actor Henry Fonda. On Golden Pond. Listen, this Norman Thayer Jr. over on Golden Pond. Amazingly, it was the first time these two screen legends worked together. Everything's just waking up. Ethel Thayer. Found like I'm listening. Jane Fonda had a role as their on-screen daughter, and the quiet, sentimental film was a surprise hit. You look sexy. I hear you turned 80 today. Is that what you heard? Man, that's really old. You should meet my father. Hey, hey oh, mommy. Darling. It means so much to him to have you here. Katherine Hepburn continued to appear in film and television productions. She almost always made her acting career her top priority in life. I can't see that. Who is that? Who's that? Who's that? Emily? Do I know these gentlemen? My dear Miss Cornelia, I was just apologizing to your beautiful niece for this intrusion. We have met before. I have no such recollection. Well, it was in passing. I... I met a great number of people in passing. When asked once if she ever regretted not raising a family of her own, she simply replied, I missed a great deal. But I don't think about what I missed. I think about what I had. You cannot have it all. But Katherine Hepburn has had quite a lot. Did I ask your name? Beautiful, intelligent, talented, Katherine Hepburn will always stand as one of the immortals of the silver screen. Hollywood will always remember Katherine Hepburn. Yeah.